Now the next one is Pareto front. What is uh, the minimum case uh, when I'm surely can eliminate a proposal? The minimum case, uh, the, the extreme case, uh, is uh, if every person that supports this proposal also supports another per, uh, proposal, so exactly the same person is not, uh, we're not counting the people, this is, we are comparing the set, and then there is a guy who supports this one but does not support this one. So basically the people who vote for this one are a subset of the people who vote for this one. Okay? And so we can take away that one and we remain, we say B is dominated and we take it away. This is basically what we are getting, uh, what we are using is actually a Pareto front. Once you ask everybody to vote for all the various proposals and then you take away all the dominated ones, what you remain is a Pareto front. Now, usually you are used to Pareto front like this, with two dimensions or few dimensions. And uh, for example, you want to buy a car and you want it to be economic, you want it to be fast. And, uh, and you go online and you look at all the cars, all the characteristics, and you place them over there. And, uh, and of course, the car D is worse on both characteristic to the car C, so we will say that it's dominated, and the car E is dominated by the car D, and so on. And notice that there is a transitivity over here, you know, E dominate D, D dominate C, then, uh, sorry, C dominate D, D dominate E, C dominate E. We have transitivity. This is important because eventually, at a certain point, we are going to lose transitivity in Vifredo. But for now, we have it. And so you get the Pareto front, and now you only have to choose among three instead of among 20,000. Now, the, the field that works with this is multi-criteria decision-making, <coughs> and there's a big part in multi-criteria decision-making that says, okay, now let's try to, to filter out even more by trying to assign numbers to those depending on how good are one respect to the other, and so on. This is where, again, I will, uh, I will go for uh, non-universality. I will say... You get a Pareto front, the Pareto front is your answer. Don't try to filter it out more because, uh, because uh, your requirements uh, only can lead, you up to, uh, can lead you this far. If you want to go farther, either you have some extra requirements uh, or you're going to, uh, you know, this one is 3.8, this other one is 3.78. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure that this... Uh, uh, that this is really the way to go. And it's surely not the way in which we are doing it in Vifredo. When we have a Pareto front, that's the result of the filter. Please. Yes, this Pareto front can still be very large. This Pareto front can still be very large. Can we, in practice, not filter all the time? It can, can be exponentially large. Yes, and that's the problem for Vifredo. In fact, Vifredo does not scale beyond 20 or 25 people. So those two are basically the same thing. This is two-dimensional and continuous. This is n-dimensional and Boolean. Okay? And here, a propo uh, each proposal is actually a circle, is actually a set, and a set dominates another set if it contains uh, the other set. So uh, B, d B dominates E, which dominates F, uh, a dominates D, and, uh, and so the Pareto front is A, B, and C. Notice uh, that C is smaller than E, but uh, C is in the Pareto front, and, um, and E and F uh, and D is not. So this form of uh, voting, where we actually extract a Pareto front, uh, has uh, a few characteristics beside being a non-universal. Uh, the most popular answer is always in the Pareto front because nobody, nothing can dominate it. 
If everybody has voted for one proposal, that will be in the Pareto front. If uh, the Pareto front has only one uh, proposal, we have found a consensus or uh, something consented by everybody. In fact, uh, when, uh, when people vote uh, over here, we don't ask them uh, if they agree with a proposal. We ask them to vote in favor of everything they can live with. Okay, so it's, uh, it's really a consent. Uh, is we are trying to lower the, the requirement uh, as much as possible. Because the more you lower it, the more it's probable that you'll find something that everybody can live with that solution. So it's really a consent. And um, the number of elements in the Pareto front is bigger or equal of one, but it's not predetermined. So another situation could have been, oh, we take the three bigger element uh, who have been voted more or something like that. We really did not want to have uh, something like that uh, is, uh, because you end up having often the same uh, very similar uh, proposals. If you have similar proposals, uh, they might both get a lot of vote, uh, but then you lose the diversity. And, uh, and this is maybe the most important one. Each person uh, each person who voted in favor of at least one proposal will always find at least one of the proposals that he has voted for in the Pareto front. This, uh, is, uh, this is actually, this can be proven and imagine that a person has voted in favor of a proposal A. Now, proposal A is dominated if proposal A is in the Pareto front, there's nothing to prove, so let's pr suppose that it's not in the Pareto front, so something dominates it. B dominates a proposal A. But if B dominates proposal A, then this person must have voted also for, for B. And by continuing this reasoning, you get a chain, and at the top of this chain is something in the Pareto front that this person has voted for. So the result is that once you look at the Pareto front, you actually have a set of proposal that represents everybody in the community. You can actually say that the Pareto Front represents the point of view of the community in all its diversity. And yes, you are going to lose uh, some information in all this, but still everybody is represented. I have to say I really like this, this property. Uh, this we've seen, a proposal can be less popular than another proposal, and, but still be in the Pareto front. Uh, each person can, fo can force an answer to be in the Pareto front. So each person is extremely powerful. You vote for one answer and only for one, you are really forcing that answer to be in the Pareto front. And similarly, each person can veto an answer from being in the consensus because the consensus need to have everybody uh, voting for that one and uh, if one person is missing that one, that uh, proposal. So each person has a lot of power in this system. So this is uh, how it's working and, and there is a, a time, you know, click, now everybody writes, click, now everybody votes, rapidly filter. Click, now everybody writes. Click, now everybody votes. Tuck, 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 tuck. And if at a certain point you find something that everybody agrees with, you get out and you have your answer. This is the simple, basic, first version of Wilfredo. This was ready in 2009. And, uh, and soon we started testing with that. And among the questions that we asked, one of them was, uh, what is uh, the, what was it? Uh, what is the sense of life? We, and we got a uh, consensus on that one. So I know what is the sense of life at this point. And it's not 42. That was a proposal, that was, someone proposed that, uh, but uh, it was uh, struck down, you know, as, yes, it's a joke, but they didn't like it, uh, so. Triangular voting, we are seeing it later in the talk, because for the basic, those three elements are enough. Uh, 